Welcome to Lonely Man PGs and this series on how to play Mage Knight. In this video, we'll be taking a look at units. There are two types of unit cards, regular and elite. Regular units have a silver backing and elite units have a gold backing. The first scenario, first reconnaissance, requires only the regular units. Regular units will be the first units that you encounter during the game. They are typically lower leveled and are able to be added to your party in lower level areas like villages or monasteries. At the beginning of the game, a unit offering is created with just regular units. In order to create the offering, the players reveal as many regular unit cards as there are players, then add two more. For a two-player game, there would be four cards in the unit offering. For the first scenario, there should be at least one unit in the offer with the village icon on the left side of the card. Elite units will be encountered later on in the game. These can be obtained from varying sources, including mage towers and cities. These units are much more powerful than regular units, but also cost much more influence to obtain. Elite units will be introduced into the game once the first core tile has been revealed. When creating the unit offer during a new round, if a core tile has been revealed on the map, the players will alternate dealing elite units and regular units, dealing elite first. In this sample two-player unit offering, the elite fire golem was revealed, then the regular savage monk, then the elite Amotep gunners, then the regular Utem guardsmen. Let's take a look at where units can be gained on the map. The icon on the left shows where they can be purchased from. Here's an example of a unit that may be added to a player's party at a village. Here's an example of a unit that may be added to a player's party at a keep. Here's an example of a unit that may be added to a player's party at a mage tower. Here's an example of a unit that may be added to a player's party at a monastery. Here's an example of a unit that may be added to a player's party at a city. Units that you recruit are stored in your unit's area, and each unit has a command token. Each player begins with a single command token, allowing them to recruit their first unit within the first few turns if they so wish. Players may gain more command tokens for unit recruitment as they level up. All command tokens, excepting the beginning token, are the reverse side of a level token. As players gain fame and level up, they gain more command tokens as well as better armor and a larger hand size. Let's say Tovac has just achieved level 3 on the fame board. The level 1 to 2 token is taken off the top of the token stack and flipped over to be used as a new command token. This ups Tovac's command limit, allowing him to recruit yet another unit. In addition, his armor has increased from 2 to 3, while his hand size has remained at 5. Let's take an in-depth look into units. This number in the upper left corner is the amount of influence that must be paid to recruit it. The value in the upper right corner shows the unit level. Some cards only heal or have effects on units with a certain level. This number also helps to determine the total value of a player's army at the end of the game. These icons in the box to the left tell where the unit can be recruited, as shown previously. The number on the armor icon is the armor value of the unit, which will be explained in a video on combat. This text box shows what abilities the units may use once activated. Some abilities may require mana. When a player wants to activate one of their unit's abilities, they announce which ability they will use, then place the command token on the unit card. Once units are spent, they may only be readied at the beginning of a new round or through certain effects. Action cards, spells, artifacts, and even other units may have effects that allow for a unit to be readied. Let's use this herbalist as an example. This herbalist middle effect allows the player to ready a level 1 or a level 2 unit. Tobat claims that he will perform this effect, readying the Utem Guardsman. This artifact card is a banner. Banners may be assigned to units at any time during a player's turn. When assigning, the banner is partially placed under the unit. While the banner is attached, the unit may benefit from the basic effect at any time, but the strong effect is inaccessible. There are also certain unit abilities that require mana as well, like this herbalist heal too. Tovac is on this village space, but wants to move closer to the monastery. Tovac will stack the peasant's movement with stamina. The Peasant gives an effect of 2 movement in addition to Stamina's move 2, so Tovac is able to move onto the forest space using 3 of the 4 move points. Let's say that Tovac is on a monastery space. Looking at this unit's offering, he wants to spend influence in order to obtain a new unit. Tovac already has a full command limit with the Peasant. Let's see how this works out. This Northern Monk's unit costs 7 influence to obtain. Tovac will play the Promise and threaten basic action cards. Each card offers 2 influence points for their basic effect. The player will also play March Sideways in order to obtain one influence point for a total of five influence points. Now we're going to do something really scummy. 
This peasant is readied, and it can offer us influence too. Tovac will spend the unit for its own replacement, giving us a total of 7 influence points. The new unit is taken from the offering, and the old unit is disbanded and replaced. The disbanded unit is removed from the game. Units may also gain wounds throughout the game, depending on how much damage they take and their armor level. Wounds will be talked about further in a different video. This concludes our video on units. Be sure to like this video and comment below if you have any questions. Also, click the subscribe button so you can see future releases for videos like this. Thanks for watching this series on Mage Knight.